So, okay. Welcome to this Mysteries of the Library Revealed webinar. Our topic tonight is What Am I Looking At? And my name is Ann Rojas, and with me tonight is Kim Burton. Uh, I am going to start tonight with a disclaimer. Um, just to let you know, the reference citations in this presentation are for demonstration purposes only. They may not be completely correct. Uh, for all things APA, please go to the Writing Center. Uh, that's where your experts are. Um, also, keep up, be aware that not all bibliographies will be in APA style or in the current APA 7th format. So one reference list may not always look like another. And if you need help from the uh, Writing Center, you can email them at writingsupport at mail.waldenu.edu, or you can go to the Writing Center website where they do have an APA style overview page. So digital formats and analyzing what you're looking at. Uh, basically, you know, it's a beautiful thing that we have so much available to us online now. But the downside of that is that everything tends to look the same. So we're going to talk tonight about how to figure out what you're looking at, and we'll show you different examples in the library. Uh, before diving into that, though, I do want to remind you that you have to first consider where you are, and taking your location into consideration can oftentimes get you halfway to understanding what you're looking at, just for the record. So when you're out there searching, consider that the open web has infinite possibilities, really, and you'll have to spend more time analyzing sources. Uh, when you're in the library website, you're going to be looking at resources we subscribe to and also help that we have posted to help you use those resources effectively and efficiently. Uh, specific databases will be even more focused, whether you're looking at a journal database, books, dissertations, videos, uh, et cetera. And uh, I don't mean to say that open web sources are always a problem. Obviously, if you're on a professional organization's website or a government website, those are reliable and trusted sources. And once you're on one of those sites, it will narrow the possibilities of what you're looking at down a little bit. Uh, and of course, if you're looking at a reference list from a trusted source, that is going to be very focused as well. So that's my advice regarding the first step. You can save time by going to reliable sources to begin with. Um, and then what we're going to cover is the, the what of journal articles, books, uh, government reports, conference materials, newspapers, videos, dissertations, and encyclopedias and dictionaries. And basically that's so that when you see something like this come up in a search in the library, you're going to be able to figure out what it is you're looking at. So um, the results lists in the library are going to tell you a lot. And I'm going to switch over to the library website here. Uh, basically, we have two different ways to search from this uh, Google style search box on the home page. You can search the row and by putting in your general search terms, you can search most of the collection that we subscribe to. Or you can also click on search everything. And I do want to just point this out because uh, when you search everything, you're going to be looking at everything on the library website. Uh, you're going to get answers to frequently asked questions, and you're going to get library subscription results. So if I put in peer review as a search, it's going to tell you what we have on our website on the left-hand side. So it'll give you information about how to limit to peer-reviewed articles, uh, what uh, evaluating resources, and how to check for peer review. In the middle column, you'll see quick answers, which is answers to frequently asked questions that we get regarding peer review. Uh, what is peer review? How do I find an article that's not peer reviewed? How do I verify that my article is peer reviewed? And then over on the right hand side, it's going to give you a list of results from Thoreau, our multi database search tool. And this is going to give you actual content from journals and books that we have in our collections. So that's what happens when you search everything. Uh, when you search Thoreau, as I said, you'll be searching. Um, most of the collection. And so if I just put in, not a full sentence, but just my general search query on a broad topic there, I'm going to put in pandemic and policy and run that search. 
Uh, that's going to give me a list of results. Um, you can see here over 17,000 results. And it's going to be a mix of different types of content. So the first way that you can tell that uh, what you're looking at is by looking at these little icons on the left-hand side of each entry in the results list. You can see that most of these are coming from academic journals is what the little icon tells us for each entry. And here we see that we have books as well. This is a, a book and the books will come up with that little icon for books or sometimes it will show you the actual cover of the book in the results list. So I'm just going to pop back over uh, to my PowerPoint to show you um, some specific examples of citations. So for example, journal articles, which is what we deal with the most when, um, when working with assignments here at Walden. And the, the journal article entry is going to start with the author name, uh, which is how they always start. Uh, with the author first and after that it'll vary from one style to another but a journal article is always going to have two titles it'll have the title of the article and the title of the journal that it was published in so in this one you can see that the title of the article is the challenge of providing the public with actionable information during a pandemic and then the journal article uh sorry the journal title is journal of law medicine and ethics and it'll also give you a volume and an issue number and page numbers. So that is what uh, journal articles are going to look like in the reference list. And then if you're looking at your results list and you click on any of the journal articles, you can see when you click on the title that it's going to give you all of the authors and it's going to tell you the source and that's going to give you the name of the journal. Okay, so let me just pop back over to my uh, PowerPoint here. Sorry. So what about books? Um, books, of course, are going to have just one title if you're looking at the whole book. So that'll start again with the author name. It'll give you the title of the book. Um, and then it's going to give you the name of the publisher. And so this is Oxford University Press. Many times they do have press in the name, but, but not necessarily. And uh, when you're looking at the results list in the databases, let me just go back to my results list here. And if I go down to one of my book results, When you click on the title, it's going to tell you under publication type that it's a book. In this case, it's telling us it's a book and that as a matter of fact, it's an ebook. Hey, Anne, I um, just wanted to interrupt for one second to remind um, any participants who just came in that if you have a question, you can type it in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. That's where we're going to be getting our questions. Um, and I also just wanted to ask you, um, a lot of times weekly assignments um, in Blackboard are book chapters. So what is the difference between knowing that you're just looking at a book and knowing uh, when it, it's actually a chapter from a book? Perfect timing. So that's our next one uh, would be a book chapter. And so in this case, uh, the book chapters are going to usually make reference to editors. They are also going to have uh, two titles. In this case, we've got Branham, et cetera, uh, Local Leadership in Pandemic Influenza. That's the name of the chapter. And then it's gonna uh, tell us that it's in uh, Dietz and Black, who are the editors. You can see it's abbreviated with EDS in this case. The name of the book is Pandemic Planning, and then it will give the page numbers for the, the chapter, and it will also give the name of the book publisher. And so let me just go over to show an example of that as well. Uh, and I have one pulled up here just because it's kind of hard to find otherwise. Uh, this is a book, the title of the book is Pandemic Planning. And as you read through the description, 
And the table of contents, you can see here that it has uh, editors named in this section, and that has its own PDF downloadable section. And it also has contributors, which again, you can look at, at those as uh, and download it as a PDF. Oops, sorry, I guess I've timed out there. Um, so that is going to give you uh, an idea of how, how to be looking at chapters and that sometimes books have editors who look over the entire content of, of the whole book and then you will have contributors who are just contributing to specific chapters of a book. And so that is generally speaking how you would find that. Uh, and again, when you're looking at the citation, um, it's, it is going to have two different titles. It's going to indicate editors and it will have a book publisher name, in this case, Taylor and Francis, as opposed to a journal name. Thanks for that. Okay, so um, next example that I have here are reports. Oftentimes we're looking at government reports and sometimes there'll be non-governmental organizations as well. Usually reports are going to have their own numbering system from within that organization, whether it's the government agency or the NGO. Uh, you can see this one comes from the Center for Transportation Studies as part of the Minnesota Department of Transportation. And just to see what those look like when you're in your results lists, go back to our results here on pandemic and policy. When you're in your results list, there's actually an area over here in the blue shaded section on the left-hand side where you can specify by publication type. And I'm just gonna pull up the reports section so that we can see what those look like. They have their own icon, you can see, and it will be marked as a report. And as you go through these, you can see that some are published by, um, we just had a drop actually into the database from Education Publishing Worldwide. They give weekly statistics and from, uh, also from Mon uh, Business Monitor International. But you'll see things like uh, the UK Ministry of Defense, the US Congressional Research Service, and even uh, the Bank of Finland Institute of Economies in Transition. So what you wanna do is just look at um, that detailed information that's in the results list and like I say, a lot of these come from the, the Business Monitor International. Here, this one comes from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. So that helps a little bit with a different one. Apparently there are a lot of weekly updates on pandemics right now. Okay, so um, another sample of what you'd be looking at in a library database would be conference materials. Uh, they will have the word conference in there somewhere. You can see conference comes up right here. It'll show the conference dates and the location. And they will either be the conference proceedings or in this case, this one is a conference session. So it'll either be by individual session or the proceedings will include all of the sessions that were included in the conference. And those also have their own icon in the databases to indicate that you're looking at conference material of some sort. And again, you can look at that uh, under publication type. You can specify, sorry, I have to go into see more here to get the full list. I can specify conference material and this icon Sorry, there we go, shows um, a person, you know, in front of a, a podium and a screen behind them with little conference attendees. So uh, that, that makes it pretty easy to spot when you're looking at a list and one of these little conference icons pops up. So Anne, um, I do have one question. Um, since, since you're right here, this is a good place to show. Somebody wanted to know what the Find at Walden button means. Oh, sure. So the Find at Walden button, if I click on that, it's going to take me 
uh, hopefully into a different database or give me links to other databases where I might find the full text. This one is taking me into the IEEE Explore database and, and that's just the databases talking nice to each other. Um, and so it's going to help you find the full text of the conference in a different database where, because where I was searching doesn't have it, but a different one has the full text. And you can see here that it's telling us uh, published in the International Conference on Behavioral Economic Socio-Cultural Computing, BSEC. That's a good question. Okay, any other questions? Uh, nope, that's it for right now. Before we move on. Okay, so I'm gonna pass it over to you, Kim. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So Anne, if you can just let me know that you can see the um, newspaper article slide. Yep. Okay, so Anne actually, she did all the heavy list lifting in um, this session because uh, pretty much the rest of the ones that I'm going to demonstrate for you are a little easier, I think, to determine what you're looking at when you see just the citation. Um, so for newspaper articles, newspaper articles will have an exact date because newspapers are daily. So you, if you ever see a year, a day, and a month, you're probably looking at a newspaper article. Another thing you wanna look for is the title of the newspaper. And a lot of times it's gonna be, you know, a title that you're familiar with, the New York Times, the Washington Post. Let me just jump out into the, um, li are you seeing the library website? Yep. Okay, so Anne did um, a search in Thoreau, which um, it came up with some great results for us in uh, EBSCO. What I wanna do is do a search in ProQuest Central. Um, this is just another database that we have um, that searches many different items, just like Thoreau did. It searches, books, articles, videos, and so forth. Um, but I'm gonna do a search in here so you can just get an idea of what a um, search results would look like in a different database. So I'm just gonna do the same search that Ann did, pandemic and policy, and hit search. And since it's so broad, I am getting a lot of results, almost 350,000 results. What I wanna do, just as Anne had uh, limited before in this left-hand column, I can go down and say, I only want the newspaper results. So I'll click on that and it's gonna pull up those newspapers and newspapers are gonna have this little icon. It makes it really simple for you to understand what you're looking at. Um, and then here is the title of the article. Newspapers are all are gonna have um, the title of the article and then the title of the newspaper. So here's the title of the newspaper. Another thing you could be looking at are uh, words such as times or post or daily or record. Those all will all indicate that you're actually looking at a, um, a newspaper. Okay, next um, we're gonna talk about videos. And this is super easy because when you're looking at videos, the citation will actually have the word video in brackets. So that right away is gonna be telling you that you're looking at a video. Let's go back out to my search results. And I'm just going to get rid of the newspapers and I'm going to switch it to audio and video works. So with audio and video works, you're going to get an, a little icon. It looks like a video, like a movie screen. You're gonna have that um, iconic triangle, which means play, which everyone's aware of and will know that this is actually a video. Uh, there'll be a link to the video in the results. And oftentimes you'll see a link to a transcript, um, you know, especially now with ADA um, requirements and complying with ADA, uh, most videos need to have a transcript. So you should be able to see that there. Sometimes the videos will be a little bit older, um, such as this one from 2001. It doesn't have a transcript, but if you actually played it, usually the transcript will pop up um, and go as you're playing, um, playing the video, it will show. Okay, now we want to go ahead and look at dissertations. So uh, another thing about, this, about what I'm showing you, it makes it so easy, dissertations are actually going to have, oops, sorry, the word dissertation in the citation. So right here we have dissertation. Another thing you wanna look for is the name of the university where the dissertation um, 
where the work was done and published the dissertation. So here we have Walden University. Let's go out to the search results again, and we're going to limit to dissertations, dissertations and theses. Uh, the icon in ProQuest for dissertations is just this little uh, piece of paper. It looks like it has an award on it, but it says dissertations and theses in it. And then here we can see after the title, of, after the name of the author, you have the university, Lakehead University, and then dissertations. And we'll scroll down. We have another title, um, another author name, and then Walden University. Um, here we have Florida International University. So these are all the dissertations. And the last thing I want to show you are encyclopedias and dictionaries. What you want to look for when you see a citation uh, for encyclopedias or dictionaries is two titles. The first title is going to be very brief. Uh, for instance, in this dictionary, the title of the entry, leadership. In this encyclopedia, the title of the entry, animals. I mean, very, very simple. Then you're going to have the second title, which is the name of the dictionary or encyclopedia it's coming from. So we have leadership in merriamwebster.com dictionary. And here we have animals in the names of the editors and then the name of the encyclopedia, encyclopedia of big data. Um, one thing about encyclopedias and dictionaries is they usually have the name encyclopedia or dictionary in their title. So it does make it very easy for you to locate them. Let me just pop out here and we'll do, if I click on this little more button, um, because I'm not seeing encyclopedias under source type, I get a little pop-up screen where I can scroll through all the different sources and see here we have encyclopedia and reference work. So I'll click include and apply. And we have the encyclopedia as a reference, just a couple of volumes, simple title, and then the name of the encyclopedia, Canadian Encyclopedia. So it says it in there. And that's how you can tell you're looking at an encyclopedia or dictionary result. And Kim, a question came up. Um, is there always going to be a link in the citation for dictionaries and encyclopedias? Yes. So for um, dictionaries, what you'll probably have is just a link to the actual uh, web page for it. So let's just jump out to this web page because this is um, the Merriam-Webster dictionaries available online. So here we have leadership and the definitions. Um, you'll notice that it says no date. That's because uh, dictionaries are always being updated, but it was retrieved on the date, this date, and that's why you would put May 28th, 2020 in there. Uh, for encyclopedias, uh, a lot of times this uh, will be in our databases. So, it doesn't seem to be opening it for me. Um, when it's in our databases, you'll see it have the DOI. You might have to actually use that link to access it. Does that answer your question? Yep, thanks. Okay. So, um, that was what we wanted to show you about the different formats for different resources, what the citation looks like and what they would look like when you um, found them in a database. Uh, we did want to share some other information for you. Uh, we have a lot of links on this slide and these slides will be available um, in about a week at the, on the um, library website. Uh, the first link is to the Evaluating Resources Library Guide publication types. It just goes over everything we just went over in this webinar. It's going to you know, show you an example of a citation from a journal and then show you what that journal would look like. And then since you know, we showed you how to identify all these different resources, we didn't tell you how to actually find these different resources. So we put some links in here to some quick answers on how to find specific resources. So let's say that you have a assignment or a discussion post where you need a newspaper article or you actually need to find a video or encyclopedia entry. One thing that we can do as well, sorry, um, if we go back to the library website, we can use the search everything feature that Ann mentioned at the beginning of um, 
our session today. So let's say you want to find encyclopedia. Oops, sorry. Encyclopedia entries. I put it in after I clicked on search everything and the quick answer is you'll see I get a quick answer on how do I find encyclopedias? Um, how do I find biographical information encyclopedias? If I click on that, it's going to tell me step by step how I can find encyclopedia entries in the library. Um, I can also do the same thing to search for newspapers and I'll get a quick answer on how to search for newspapers in the library. So this banner that goes across the top of every page in the Walden Library, um, this is where you're going to go to get quick answers um, and to find help when you need it. If you click on the get help link up here, you will find links to recorded webinars and we have recorded webinars for a lot of different library skills as well as subject specific. So if you're in the business and management program, we have specific webinars in business and management. In the Build Library Skills box, we have links to our library skills guides, which are just guides that we've developed as web pages that go over step-by-step -step different skills for doing research and finding resources in the library. We also have a link here to tutorials. These are all short interactive tutorials that you can um, use to just get a refresher on doing research in the library, anatomy of a research article, and a couple of other things to help you um, with your research. And finally, we have the Ask a Librarian button up here. Um, when you click on the Ask a Librarian button, you can send us an email. This is the quickest way for you to get an answer to your question. We have reference librarians working seven days a week. We don't work 24 hours a day, um, and we may not be there if it's a holiday. Um, however, we're really good at getting back to you. We have 24 hours, but it usually doesn't take that long. You can just send us the question, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, you may be able to chat with us. When you click on the chat, if chat is live, this button would be blue. Um, but you can see today's date will always be highlighted with the times in Eastern um, time that chat is open. And when chat is open during those times, you can click on the button and speak synchronously with a reference librarian. You can call and leave us a voicemail. When you leave us a voicemail, we ask that you leave your name, your ID number, and your question. Um, voicemails will go into the um, email queue. So they're all going to come in. It's going to go in the order that it came in. Um, you know, we do have students all over the globe. We have librarians at every different time zone. So it um, just isn't feasible for us to return calls. So we return all voicemails with emails. And finally, if you need a little bit more um, in-depth appointment, you can make a doctoral research appointment with a librarian. You just can go down, uh, choose the school that you're interested in, um, and then look at times that that librarian is available. You can click on the time, set up an appointment with that librarian, and have a 30-minute one-on-one research appointment to talk about your specific research. And that, um, well, that brings us to 7.30 right on the dot. Um, and we have um, covered everything that we wanted to. Um, did we have any other questions, Anne? I think we got them all under control. Maybe one other thing, if you could just show them how to get to ProQuest Central again, because that Perfect. question did come up and a lot of times people miss that because we tend to go over yep. that fast. <laughs> I did kind of go over that fast, so I, I apologize for that. So ProQuest Central is um, a database um, and the quickest way to find it is just to click on the databases A to Z. And then if you click on the page, that's how I usually find it. Um, and you'll scroll down, you'll see it is right here, ProQuest Central. Thanks. That was a good question, so. Yes, yes, <laughs> thank you. Otherwise, we, it looks good. Okay, all right, well then I'm gonna stop um, sharing my screen um, and stop the recording. Let me go ahead and stop that recording.